Market segmentation. It plays a major role when you're doing research. You need to know who your audience is. That makes a big deal as to how you're going to advertise, what you're going to be looking for, all the different demographics we're going to look at. You need to pay attention to who you are selling to. There's totally different market segments based upon age, based upon where you're at. The market in California is dramatically different in the retail world than it is in Georgia or in Maine. You have differences in taste, differences of opinion, differences of thought, differences in the way that you present the items as well. Everything is totally different wherever you go, and that is just in the United States. If you're trying to appeal to a different audience in Europe, in South America or in Asia, you'll have a different type of mix when it comes down to the research, what you're looking for, and how you're going about approaching it. You want to divvy up the customers by regions, characteristics of the different segments you're looking at. You want to look at all the different things as to how people dress, how they think, how they respond, how they do different things. Um, you want to look at the geography that plays a big role. You have different markets totally on the East and West Coast. You have different markets on the coast versus the center of the United States. You have a very different market if you're trying to sell products over in China or India. You have different markets when it comes down to France, Italy, Germany. They're totally different as to how you approach the geography, how you look at the demographics, what they're looking for, how they wash clothes differently. Americans like it this way over here. They like everything instant and fast. Other countries, if you go especially in Europe, if it's too fast, you're not doing a good job according to their perception. So you have different psychographics as well. You're looking for the different benefits of the product. You're looking for the usage rate, how often they're going to have it, and how often your product or service will turn over, which really plays a major way as to how you're going to go about marketing it. Of all the demographics, look on the age. There's a big difference. Do people in the 50-plus year bracket, do they buy baby clothes? Actually, they do, but they don't buy baby clothes for their own babies. They buy baby clothes for their grandchildren. And guess what? The, the difference in the pricing of the, of the outfits is much higher. You can sell a grandparent a, a, a really super cute baby outfit for an outrageous price that the people in the 20 and 30 year age bracket would never think about paying for because their grandchild has to have their very best. Yes, you have to pay attention to the different demographics. The gender, male, female, is the what you're selling for. Look on the income level. Uh, if you look in some communities, they have so much disposable income that literally, it's a, I had one car dealer over here in Orange County, California, said there's this, people come in here all the time and they change cars like no, most people change their shirts. It's actually true. Trying to pick up a one or two year old used car at a reasonable price is actually pretty easy in some parts of the country versus others. Income is a big factor as to who your market is and who you're paying attention to. Ethnic. Sometimes you pay attention to the micro details as to what's out there. And that way you can focus in on these niche markets. If you can capture a niche market so everybody of a certain ethnicity comes to your place, they, you can charge a higher price, but you have to pay attention to all the different variations that are critical to that. The family life cycle. You have grandparents great-grandparents, you have young people, you have different aspects of the family life cycle where they're at. All these are needed for you to pay attention in your research. The target market is critical. You want to make certain your marketing mix is intended to make the needs of that group. You also have to pay attention to how you're going to go about research that group. Secondary research, those things that are already in existence and hence a quick already paid for, cost-effective, available in abundance information sitting out there, it's already available to you at almost no cost whatsoever. You can pay a consultant a lot of money to go research it, but you don't need to pay a consultant. You just get on your computer, put in the demographics you're looking for, and for a relatively cheap fee or no fee, you can go out and look for your demographic, what they're out looking for. Sometimes, if you have a corporation, if you look at your, your internal records, you look on your sales accounts, who is buying your product? If you get a chance, look on your competitors. Who is buying their product? Do you want those people in your group over there? Who are your A customers? 
the ones that will always pursue you because they love the product service and the personality of the people. And then who are the B, C, and D customers? Those D customers, the ones that are marginal, complain all the time. Can you get rid of them all together? Life would be easier for you and maybe better for them. It just break that tie. It just depends. Pay attention to who is the internal records and then look at the external records. Look on the published data. The census has a massive wealth of information and it's free. Did you hear me? I said it's free. So you want to pay attention to the free items that are available for you to be successful as a business person because of the fact that you want to reduce your costs, but also have the most current aspects of research as to who your customers are, who the clientele is, Look on the different reports out there. You can pick up a report. I had one guy call me up and I, I was I was out there looking for some secondary free research over there. And, and so he called me up and, and I says, well, I'm looking at this market over here. He says, how much would a report cost? $2,000. I says, really? I says, okay, then we're probably not going to be talking much in our lifetime. He says, well, how about $500? I says, well, how about and I named a ridiculously low price. I picked the $2,000 report up for $25. Yes. And, and so you have those aspects. Negotiate everything with the researchers because a lot of them are hungry. So it depends what you want in the process. Secondary data, internal corporate information, government agencies, the SBA, the Small Business Administration, is a wealth of information. Uh, out, and you can, it's all free on their website. Look on trade and associations. See what kind of free newsletters they have, free information. It is in their interest for you to pick up information from them. And that way you might become a member and it makes them look good in the aspect of the number of members, but also the usage and also their industry. Business periodicals, news media, be careful. There's an awful lot of debris out there. They call it news. So, But you can pick up some different aspects when it comes down to a business perception. Pay attention to the big five on geography, the demographics, the psychographics, the benefits, the usage. Those are the big five and you accompany those big five with the age, gender, income, ethnicity, the family life cycle, and then explore all the different avenues of secondary research, what kind of existing databases out there, what is free for you to develop your business and your research when it comes to looking on the market segments. Take care.